here we have a rotating sphere of water about 25 millimeters in diameter and inside this sphere are a whole bunch of little tiny air bubbles and we will see what the angular acceleration due to rotation does to these air bubbles as a function of time what you are observing are the bubbles moving to the center axis of rotation as a function of time they will form this rather tightly packed uh, bubble core these bubbles are kept from coalescing from a small amount of added surfactant to the water here we have a rotating sphere filled with bubbles and tea leaves and as expected the bubbles go to the center and the tea leaves go to the outside edge along with a few chunks of orange peel Here we have a rotating sphere with bubbles and chunks from breaking up a small vitamin tablet. And the bubbles go to the center core, but the vitamin chunks seem to stay in their location dispersed through the sphere. And from this, we deduced that the vitamin chunks have a density near that of water. We come to the earth which well grew to get here the way it is now here is our world our planet earth floating in space we will be going backward in time imperfectly but done in a very disciplined manner please notice there is no subduction no rotation of tectonic plates no twisting no form fitting no altering shapes or sizes it would be impossible impossible for these continental plates to fit together perfectly without this being true and yet the upper tectonic plates fit together perfectly on a much smaller planet yes there's been some erosion landslides blah blah but overall this activity is insignificant there is a kind of conspiracy of silence among certain scientists they know but are not telling you that the upper tectonic plates of earth also join in the Pacific not partially they join totally you are asked to believe that the continents swim or drift about willy-nilly bumping and crashing as if they were on a grease skillet this is not true the simple truth is apparently too upsetting to too many apple carts we're now going forward in time to show how the actual growth of the earth took place imperfect as the details but the overall is nailed. Antarctica, as you see, has become subtropical. Africa on a smaller globe move way downward under the globe. In fact, for hundreds of millions of years, the bottom of Africa was the South Pole. South America's tail goes under and wraps around the bottom of Africa. Then incredibly, it joins coast with Antarctica. 65 million years ago and more, these continents were joined and marsupials like the duckbill platypus roam from Australia, Antarctica, and across southern South America and up into Africa, the platypus. Dinosaurs roamed all over this world on the upper tectonic plate because there were no oceans, just shallow seas. Here today, Antarctica is frozen over and Australia and its surrounding islands are the remaining home of marsupials. Do you see how broadly the Pacific is opening compared to the Atlantic? This is exactly why the knee-jerk Pangaea theory exists. The Pacific spread is too difficult to easily visualize because it's so big. The Atlantic spread is so obvious that a child would recognize it, but they are the same. in our rainbow orange yellow green blue okay 
So we bury the new seafloor back to the fault lines as dictated by color or age. 10 million years back, these are the ages of the seafloor as measured by science and they're generally true. Earth grew. 20 million. I'm not making this information up. This map comes from the scientific community. 30 million. You can find the same map in many places on the internet. It's common knowledge. 40. The ocean bottom is from one year to 180 million years old. 50. 70% of it is no older than 60 million years old. 60. The upper plate, the continents, are as old as 2 billion years old and more. 70. 10 to 20 times as old as the undersea plates. The undersea plate is new and spreading at the rifts. Why does the scientific community desperately cling to and promote the idea that the ocean bottom is sliding under the continents and into a magma which is twice as dense as solid granite? A totally unsupportable and scientifically unsound idea? They have to. Or else they'd have to observe and admit that the Earth is growing. And that, viewers, is a very big deal. That would change everything in science from the smallest particle to the whole universe. 100 years of scientific theory out the window. That's a lot to give up. It's important to remember that science and the universe should and must be easier to understand as we go back in the universe's evolution under the earth and tore away from India. Spreading down from the Arctic and away from North America, Eurasia was still the largest landmass on Earth. The recurving of this gigantic landmass created the greatest folding of the upper crust on Earth. This folding and mountaining happened just above this new triangular broken away peninsula that we call India. If India wasn't hanging down there, Northern India would be Asia's coast. This land area was stretched out to the side, just as Northern Italy was stretched sideways because it was on Europe's stretching coast. Down lower on both India and Italy, the sideways pulling tension ceased and normal recurving, mild mountaining began anew. Finally, Africa began tearing free of Europe. As Africa pulled downward, the mountains draped down over the left side of India. What about the other side? Brings us to Australia. Australia was broken in a long sweeping break from North America and Asia. The break curved inward as it came down Asia. North America pulled away, but Australia was held against Asia by Antarctica, which clung in turn to South America and Africa and then of course Asia. Seems complicated, it's not. Finally, mainland Asia could stand the pressure no longer and it tore a mighty tear, a tear we now call the Yellow Sea. This relieved the pressure on Asia and that lower land was to be forfeit. As Australia pulled down, the land unwound and finally had to bend backward and break into islands, which turned out into the sea. Australia was pulled down inexorably and the mountains angled down Indonesia, with the land folding along the right side of India, folded like cloth folds. Asia also spread from the North Pole. It crushed down on India. This is why we have buckled mountains above and to the sides of India, the only true reason. Australia finally tore away from Antarctica 65 million years ago and took its place in the spreading ocean. It isolated the southern marsupial. The marsupial's bigger home, Antarctica, froze over with the arrival of the newly created deep sea plate. The ocean surrounded now Australia, which became the one big remaining home for marsupial life. Islands such as Great Britain, Norway, Sweden, and others are broken off chunks that, as with Iceland, still move 
as the earth grows semi-slowly away from their mainland homes, riding within and on their spreading plates. Do you see how broadly the Pacific is opening compared to the Atlantic? This is exactly why the knee-jerk Pangea theory exists. The Pacific spread is too difficult to easily visualize because it's so big. The Atlantic spread is so obvious that a child would recognize it, but they are the same. I don't want anyone to think we may have manipulated the Earth while the away side circled, so we'll show the Atlantic in its growth first and then the Pacific. Please watch the details. It seems so natural because it is so natural. This is how it happened. We were very, very strict in our rules and the way we followed them, besides no subduction and no turning and no enlarging, reducing and deforming. We went much further. We followed the undersea tectonic maps that are commonly accepted, 